up, peers, and welcome to Bitcoin to the Max here on the World Crypto Network. And uh, we continue uh, the mind-blowingly awesome book, <laughs> What Has Government Done to Our Money, by the hero of Bitcoin, Murray Rothbard. Well, he is a hero of freedom and economics, thus a hero of Bitcoin. <laughs> Chapter 8, The Proper Supply of Money. Now, we may ask, what is the supply of money in society and how is that supply used? In particular, we raise the, pre the perennial question, how much money do we need? Must the money supply be regulated by some sort of criterion or can it be left alone to the free market? First, the total stock or supply of Bitcoin in society at any one time is the total amount of Satoshis existing in well, Bitcoin. Let us assume for the time being that only one Bitcoin or one money is established on the free market. And let us further assume that, of course, Bitcoin is this uh, scarce commodity money. Although we could take uh, other shit coins, um, but this is up to the market and not to us to decide the best commodity uh, to use as money. Uh, but come on, I mean, it's Bitcoin. <laughs> no shit coins. <laughs> Since money is Bitcoin, the total supply of Bitcoin is the total amount of Satoshis in existence on the blockchain in society. The shape of Bitcoin does not matter. May it be a multi-signature, a single signature, uh, amount in a lightning payment channel, or uh, open die, right? Expect if the cost of changing shapes in a certain way is greater than another. Multi-sig is more expensive as a single sig. In that case, one of the shapes will be chosen by the market as the money of account, Bitcoin on-chain transactions. And the other shapes will have a premium or discount in accordance with the relative cost on the market. Sidechain tokens might have a different market price, although they are pegged one-to-one -to, -one to Bitcoin. Changes in the total Bitcoin supply will be governed by the same causes as changes in other goods. Increases will stem from greater production or mining, well, from miners here, and decreases from being used up or lost of the private keys. Because the market will choose a durable commodity, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, and because Bitcoin is not used up in rate of other commodities, but is employed as a medium of exchange, the proportion of the annual production is the total stock will tend to be quite small. One Bitcoin is always one Bitcoin. It will never be 0 0.9 Bitcoin. Changes in the total Bitcoin stock then generally take place very slow, every 10 minutes. What should be the proper supply of Bitcoin? Well, all sorts of criteria have been put forth. That Bitcoin should move in accordance with the population, with the volume of trade, with the amounts of goods being produced, so as to keep the price level constant. Few indeed have suggested leaving this decision to the free market and free sovereign notes. But Bitcoin differs from other commodities in one essential fact. And grasping this difference furnishes a key to the understanding of monetary matters. When the supply of any other good increases, this increase confers a social benefit as it is a matter of general rejoicing. Beautiful wording here. More consumer goods mean higher standards of living for the peers. More capital good means sustaining and increasing the living standards in the future. The discovery of new fertile land or natural resources also promise to add to the living standard, present and future. But what about Bitcoin? Does an additional, it does an addition to the Bitcoin supply also benefit the public at large? Well, consumer goods are used up by well, consumers. Uh, 
and capital goods and natural resources are used up in the process of producing consumer goods. But Bitcoin is not used up. Its function is to act as a medium of exchange, to enable goods and services to travel more uh, expediously from one peer to another. These exchanges are all made in terms of Bitcoin prices. Thus, if a television set exchanges for three Bitcoin ounces, we say that the price of the television is three Bitcoin. At any one time, all goods in the economy will exchange at certain Bitcoin ratios or prices. As we have said, Bitcoin or, well, Bitcoin, <laughs> is the common denomination of all prices. But what of Bitcoin itself? Does it have a price? Since a price is simply an exchange ratio, it clearly does. But in this case, the price of Bitcoin is an array of all the infinite number of exchange ratios for all the various goods in the market. Those supposed that a television set costs three Bitcoin, an auto costs 60 Bitcoin, and a loaf of bread, uh, what is that, uh, one million Satoshis, and an hour of, of Alice's legal service costs one Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin will be an array of alternative exchanges. One Bitcoin will be worth either a third of a television set, a sixteenth of an hour of a car, one hundred loaves of bread, or one hour of Alice's legal service. Or actually, Alice's developer service, because uh, uh, cypherpunks write code. <laughs> and so on down the line. All the price of money, of, of Bitcoin then, is the purchasing power of Bitcoin unit. In this case, well, Bitcoin or Satoshis. It tells what the one Bitcoin can purchase in exchange. Just as the money price or the Bitcoin price of a television set tells us how much Bitcoin a television set can bring in exchange. What determines the price of Bitcoin? Well, the same forces that determine all prices of the market. That venerable but eternally true law of supply and demand. We all know that if the supply of eggs increases, the price will tend to fall. But if the buyer's demand for eggs increases, the price will tend to rise. The same is true for Bitcoin. An increase in the supply of money will tend to lower its price. And an increase in the demand for money will raise it. But what is the demand for Bitcoin? In the case of X, we know what the demand means. It is the amount of Bitcoin consumers are willing to spend on X plus the X retained and not sold by suppliers. Similarly, in the case of Bitcoin, the demand means the various goods offered in the exchange for Bitcoin plus the Bitcoin that is retained in cold storage and not spent over the certain time period. In both cases, the supply may refer to the total stock of the good on the market. What happens then if the supply of Bitcoin increases? Well, the demand of, the money of Bitcoin remains the same. The price of Bitcoin falls. That is, the purchasing power of Bitcoin will fall along the line. One Bitcoin will now be worth less than 100 loaves of bread, a third of a television set, etc. Uh, conversely, if the supply of Bitcoin falls, that is, if uh, individuals lose their private keys, the purchasing power of the gold on, of the Bitcoin rises. What, if the, what is the effect of the change in the Bitcoin supply? Well, following the example of David Hume, one of the first economists, we may ask ourselves what happens if overnight some good some good fairy slipped into our pockets, purses, and bank vaults and doubled our supply of Bitcoin. Or oh, would that not be nice? In our example, the, she magically doubled our supply of gold or Bitcoin. Would we be twice as rich? Well, obviously not. What makes us rich is an abundance of goods. And what limits that abundance is the scarcity of resources, namely land, labor, and capital. 
multiplying Bitcoin will not whisk these resources into being. Oh, so beautiful, that language. We may feel twice as rich for the moment, but clearly all we are doing is diluting the Bitcoin supply. As the peers rush out to spend their newly found wealth, prices will, very roughly, double, or at least until the demand is satisfied and money no longer bids against itself for the existing goods. Thus, we see that while an increase in the Bitcoin supply, like an increase in the supply of any good, lowers its price, the change does not, unlike other goods, confer a social benefit. The peers at large are not made richer, whereas new consumers or capital goods add to the standard of living, new Bitcoin only raise prices. That is, they dilute their own purchasing power. The reason for this puzzle is that Bitcoin is only useful for, ex ex for its exchange value. Other goods have various real utilities uh, so that an increase in the supply satisfies more consumer wants. Bitcoin has only utility for pro uh, prospective exchange. Its utility lies in its exchange value or purchasing power. Our law that an increase in money does not confer a social benefit stems from the unique use as a medium of exchange. An increase in the money supply then only dilutes the effectiveness of each gold ounce. On the other hand, a fall in the supply of Bitcoin raises the price of each Satoshi. We come to the startling truth that it does not matter what the supply of Bitcoin is. Any supply will do as well as any other supply. The free market will simply adjust by changing the purchasing power or effectiveness of the Bitcoin. There is no need to tamper with the market in order to alter the Bitcoin supply that it is determines. At this point, the monetary planner might object, all right, granting that it is pointless to increase the, the Bitcoin supply, isn't gold uh, Bitcoin mining a waste of resources? Or shouldn't the government keep the money supply constant and prohibit new mining? <laughs> this argument might be plausible to those who hold no principled objection to government meddling throughout, though it would not convince the determined advocate of liberty. But the objection overlooks an important point that gold is, or that Bitcoin is not only money, but it also inevitably is a scarce commodity. And an increase in the supply of Bitcoin may not confer a monetary benefit, but it might confer a non-monetary benefit. For example, it does increase the supply uh, of gold it does increase the supply of gold of, of Bitcoin used in consumption. Uh, what is that in Bitcoin? I don't think that, that you can use Bitcoin up in consumption at all. Hmm. Well, Bitcoin mining, therefore, is not a social waste at all. Hmm. Okay, that, that, that gives some food for thought. Not, not entirely sure, actually. We conclude, therefore, that determining the supply of Bitcoin, like all other goods, is best left to the free market, aside from the general moral and economic advantages of freedom over coercion. Not dictated quantity of money will do the work better and a free market will set the production of Bitcoin in accordance with, the, with its relativity ability to satisfy the need of consumers as compared with all other productive goods. Piers, it, honestly, this book is mind-blowing. How often, Piers, how often have you heard the common objection that, oh, the Bitcoin supply will not change and therefore you cannot adjust to the prices? Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. As a matter of fact, now that the stock to flow ratio the, is ultimately high, 
Uh, and now that the inflation rate or the issuance rate is becoming lower and lower with every hardening, we actually reduce the uneasiness of a shifting money supply. That's a benefit. That's a feature. It's not a bug. Absolutely not. And look at that, Rothbard's objection that he says that even when we could make sure that some government uh, would set the supply of Bitcoin uh, or, or of gold or Bitcoin to an equal level, that that would be good. But of course, red governments are bad. But I mean, we have made that. We have with Bitcoin a money that ultimately in the year 2141 will stop to be issued. We have fixed this problem. Isn't that amazing? Rothbard was like, well, actually, if we can find a way of keeping the supply level, that would be good. Well, we have it. It's Bitcoin. It's, it's genius. Every time I read this book and compare it to how Bitcoin works, I freak out. It's beautiful. And Rothbard is an absolute genius. And that's why I'm saying read Rothbard and use Bitcoin. Uh, another cool name of the show here on the World Crypto Network. And thank you very much for joining me here on Bitcoin to the max uh, for the reading of what has government done to our money. Isn't that, and I'm, it blows my mind all the time. It's insane. Okay, I'll stop rambling now. <laughs> and thank you for the peers that support the show here on teleco.in slash Max. Peers, you are the best and see you on the next show. Huddle strong and don't fall for the unit bias and don't fall uh, for uh, the changing of the Bitcoin supply because it's needed in order to stabilize the prices. It's nonsense. Come on.